hey guys and welcome to my channel my name is rich carlos if today is your first time kindly subscribe to my channel click on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever i make a post and for my returning subscribers thank you so much i love you guys so i was doing something and something dropped in my spirit and i decided to share i mean we are here to always share to share but the good yeah and always the good as, as well not the bad actually so I, in life, I believe that life is a lesson and I believe that we learn every day. I've, people have gone through a lot. Personally, okay, let me just talk about myself. Personally, I've gone through a lot. I've like had a lot of challenges that made me that I was so afraid. I was hurt. I was pained. I, you know, all kinds of trauma and the rest of them. Most of the times, depression, of course, yeah. Of course, I've been, I've been depressed. Yeah, are you, are, you, are you surprised to hear that? I have been depressed. I have been frustrated. I have been disappointed. I have been... I don't even know, like, any worst thing you can think of. And I know that I'm not the only one that has gone through something like that. Or someone somewhere is going through the same thing at this moment. I don't care what it is. I don't care what the problem is. Whether it's a financial issue, a health issue, or you're looking for a job, you're looking for children, you want healing, whatever it is. Or someone hurts you, a heartbreak or something. I know that we all have been through something. We all have been through one thing or the other. And some people are still going through something at this moment. And I want to tell you that, number one, I won't say it's part of life. But somehow, somehow, 50% is part of life. I mean, we go through everyday life to like experience a lot of things. And now... I, I know my caption must have been like this one want to just get um followers or subscribers or views. No, I'm going to tell you the raw truth. When I mean a therapy for depression or frustration, like I it's something I have tasted. Like over the years I've been like I told you over the years, I've been hurt, I've been in pain, I've been I've been in tears or something like that in one one phase of my life or the other. And you know, you just one we just have to try and be like okay, surviving every single day, every single day. But I found this therapy, and it's not about surviving, it's just about you having your total healing, it's about you getting healed, like no depression, zero depression, zero frustration, zero pain, zero heartache, zero, zero everything. Not that your problems are basically solved, but you are hopeful that one day. You understand at least that thing will keep you in check it will just give you that hope that okay you don't need to worry about this you don't need to kill yourself about this i will take care of it it's just give me a little time or something you understand so i i found out this therapy and to god like i i i promise you guys it has worked for me something that has worked three months or more consecutively Man, it should be something that I should hold on to and also run with it and not allow it to like leave me forever because of course tomorrow you will encounter one disappointment or the other, either in your workplace or anywhere. You can encounter any negativity and you need this thing like to hold on to, to like let this thing be your guide because don't, let, don't just let go, don't let go. If you let go you're on your own, you will be frustrated. And a lot of people don't know how to do with, deal with frustration. A lot of people don't know how to deal with anger. A lot of people don't know how to deal with depression. A lot of people don't know how to deal with pain and hurt. A lot of people don't know how to deal with rejection. And that is why we are seeing most people are committing suicide. Most people are just trying to kill them, trying to harm themselves, thinking that, okay, if I end it all, at least I will be in peace. But excuse me, you won't be in peace when you end it because you have to answer to somebody because the life you have is not your own. You're not the, you didn't go to the market to buy the air that you're breathing. You did not. Someone, somewhere gave it to you willingly and now you take it back by yourself. That means you have to answer to that. You really need to. So I am not trying to judge those that committed suicide. I am never going to judge them. But what I'm trying to say is that we can prevent these things from happening. At least those of us that are alive, we can actually make it work. Those of us that are still breathing, we can actually say, no, I won't die because of this thing. I won't kill myself. I won't hurt myself because of this thing. Because there is a solution. 
there is always there is always a solution always no matter no matter the circumstances there is always a solution so i want to introduce you to this therapy that has been my ah, this therapy has really worked like what i used to tell people is that just if you want to do something just try it for three months and see how it is if you're fine with it fine if you're not you can stop it something you've tried three months like back to back like every single day you're not missing a day you're not missing anything every day you've tried it and at the end of three months there is no positive result i think you should stop that I, that's what i believe you understand so this therapy is talking to god i am not saying praying yes of course as a christian as a christian let me get something straight let me just straight, straighten something let me just um at least give the introduction or the background or the foundation of what i am introducing as a christian i I don't believe in being a Christian without having a prayer life. That is number one. Prayer life, I mean, is not the general prayer that we pray in church. It is not the prayer, general prayer that we pray in our family, like morning and night devotion. That is not what I mean. And I'm not saying those things are bad. No, you're supposed to pray with your brethren because the Bible said, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. So, of course, it helps you also because iron sharpness iron. I'm talking about a prayer life, like personal prayer life. I give an instance. I say this a lot to those people that, that know me. If you are in a relationship or you are married, let me use a relationship because it's always the one that is always shocking us. <laughs> if you're in a relationship and um, you really love this person, you're a guy, you really love this girl, or you're a girl, you really love this guy, and you really want to, like, you want to maintain a constant relationship with him, a constant communication with him, a constant, like, fellowship with the guy or with the girl. So every morning you wake up, the first person in your mind to call is this person. During the day, you're calling this person. How is your day going? At night, you're calling this person. You understand? You, If you're not on call with this, you're chatting. So long as your heart is in that person your heart belongs to that person or your heart is always thinking about this person so you're always calling this person all the time you try to maintain constant communication with this person or relationship with this person that is how it should be with you and god like i don't know how to communicate what i want to say but what i'm trying to say basically is that you must have a prayer life let god be the first person you talk to and the last person you talk to now if you can establish a prayer life remember consistency is the key let's have let's have three just give yourself three months consecutively praying like every day don't miss a day of being in god's presence even if it's as little as 10 minutes talk to him now what i mean by prayer life i'm not talking about you coming in his presence to ask him to solve your problem he knows your problem mm. God knows your problem. God knows your challenges. God knows what you're going through. He's seen everything. Let's be honest here. Because he said, delight yourself in the Lord and I will grant thee the desires of your heart. That means for him to grant you the desire of your heart, he already sees your heart. He knows what you desire. He knows what you want. So you telling him to solve your problem, for me, I feel it's just vain repetition. And that is why the Bible says we do not know how to pray. When you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us through groanings that cannot be uttered. Now, I believe telling God your problem is just like repetition because he knows what I want. He knows that I need this. He knows that I need money. He knows that I need to be healed. He knows that I'm sick at the moment. He knows that I'm... So he knows. Now, your prayer life, your prayer life should be about knowing him. Your prayer life should be about surrendering to him. When you give him all of you, you know, he created us. The Bible said he created us in his image and likeness. Let me give you an example. I have an iPhone. I cannot, there is no way I can operate this iPhone better than Apple. The owners, the, use, the people that made, I, I can never operate the phone better than them. They know what they installed in the phone. Things that have not even come across in the phone, they know. I don't know if you understand me like 
they know the capacity of the phone. They know what the phone can do and what the phone cannot do. There are some things that this phone can do and I don't even have an idea that it can do them. Now, if you have a problem, if I have a problem with my iPhone, I will have to contact someone that can solve the problem. If I was if I was staying at the UK or US or wherever, I can go to the Apple store and tell them, okay, this is what, and they have spare for everything because they are the manufacturer. Now, God created us in his image and likeness. He is the manufacturer. Let me use that word. He's the manufacturer of human beings. Now, you have um example. Let me give an example. You are sick. You are sick. Sorry. You are sick. And so, 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 please, is paining you. The manufacturer always has spare. Spare that you can't buy with money. Hey, isn't this wonderful? Like, I've not even gotten to where I'm going to, but like I want to give you this foundation kind of for you to understand what I mean. He, he has a spare for every part of your body. A spare that you cannot buy with money. You can only buy this spare with time, with fellowship, with consistency. Instead of you worrying, going from one place to the other, is it not better you talk to him? Now, if you have a prayer life, if you have an altar that you service every day, altar dedicated to him that you service every day, it will be easy for you to apply this therapy that I'm talking about, which is talking to him. Talking to him, I mean the way I am talking to you. And I don't mean you going to pray. For example, something happened yesterday in my home and uh, i'd already done my normal personal devotion with god so the thing just happened in the afternoon i'm trying to give you an example of what i mean and i'm like holy spirit something just happened you just saw what happened i do not know how to handle this please i don't know the decision to make i do not know what to say please step in and do something I give it to you. Like, I know that I do not have an option. I know that I don't have a solution to that thing. Why stress myself trying to crack my head, get angry, get frustrated over that incident? I simply give it to, give it to him because, man, he knows everything. He knows how to do anything. He can do something out of nothing. So why am I bothering my head? So that is the talking to that I mean to like learn how to communicate with God. Learn how to talk to him. So even the tiniest of thing, like even the most tiniest thing, God is so detailed and detailed and intentional about us. That but we don't even understand. We don't we don't get to understand that. I don't know how to say it, but there are some examples that I can't just say on camera i'm serious i can only tell those that are very 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 close to me i am i mean i'm sorry i'm trying to protect something but he is so detailed he is so intentional about everything every single thing so long as you have that really you so long as you have that relationship with him i promise you there is nothing you tell him that he won't tell, he won't answer like even if he doesn't answer it immediately he will grant you the peace to wait. He will grant you the peace that you need, like, to hold on to. To, like, okay, hold on. I will do this, but not now. Develop the habit of talking to God. There was a day I was just so angry for, for no reason. I'm like, God, I'm frustrated. I am weak. I am frustrated. Like, I am literally tired. Please, Holy Spirit, just take control. And I walk away. When you when I when you see me when you see me talk <laughs> when you see me in my home, most times I behave like a mad person. <laughs> Can be doing the dishes, and I remember something and something pops up. I'm like, ah, Holy Spirit. I, okay, I plan to do this, but I don't know how it will be. But just uh, guide me, guide me. How should I go about it? Just take control. I drop and I'm there. Like I have said it, and it's there. I won't come and start cracking my head, okay, hey, hey, hey. Mm -mm, no. When you be truthful, be honest to God. Tell him how you feel, like, God, I am frustrated, I feel like dying. Mm, tell him. He wants to see you in that vulnerable state. Don't come to him strong. 
Mm -mm. Come to him as weak as a lamb. Then you can draw strength. Don't I don't know how to like pass the information, but I don't know. I I wish that some of us would get what I'm trying to say or have experienced what I'm saying. Try this three months. Have a consistent prayer life. Like every single day, make sure you pray. Don't pray about your problems. Just tell God, I want to love you. I want to be, I want to be called your own. I want to make you proud. I want you to dwell inside of me. I give you all of me. Take over my life. Take over my, my marriage, my career, my children, my husband, my family. Take over my finances, everything. Just give him everything. Do not pray about your problem. Then when you are in distress, when you are frustrated, at, just talk to him. Like, talk, talk. The way I'm talking. Don't say in Jesus' name, God, I've come to you. No, no, just talk. Tell him how you feel. Be honest with him. God needs your honesty and your loyalty. Be honest with him. If you're honest with him, he will show forth. Two days ago, I, 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 I woke up to pray the time I'm supposed to pray. And I was having this serious headache. And I was so tired. I was so weak. Like, if you leave me, I will go back to bed. But instead of going back to bed, to tell you that I am not strong, I just said... Holy Spirit, to be honest, I am weak. I don't feel like praying. I am having headache at this moment. Holy Spirit, is it possible that you pray, in, pray through me? I am weak. I am tired. I feel like sleeping. Please, Holy Spirit, pray through, pray through me. And before you know it, guys, <laughs> I won't tell you. The rest is a story. But that is how, that I'm trying to tell you how much it means or what it costs and what you will benefit from talking to God. From like being, like he should be your best pal, your best friend. Like sharing everything with him is the best. Sharing every details of your life. He is already seeing them, but for you to make out time to come and share it with him is what he treasures. He said, he said 10%, not only in tight, also in time. Give him time. 10% out of 24 hours is how many hours. You can start by 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Before you know it, you're landing one hour. You're landing one hour, 30 minutes. Before you know it, you come into his presence. You don't even want to go. You're like, I'm so safe here. And when I leave here, I I, I, I don't feel like being the other. I don't, like, I don't. God has been dealing with me for the past. I got saved 2019. But you know it's a journey because I've been in and out, in and out. But God has been dealing with me since the month of May. And guys, it's been mad, like it's been, I've never had so much peace and joy ever in my life. Like this period. L like I don't, like the first thing in my mind, the first thing in my heart is God. Like God, like God. No matter how much I love you, like I love you guys. I love my husband. I love my children. Yeah, I'm saying children because I'll still give birth. I love my children. I love my mom. I love my brothers. But the first thing, the one I want to fall in love more deeply, like the first thing in my mind is God. And I tell him every time. Most times when I'm reading the scriptures and I see where he says, I love you. I'm like, I pause. I'm like, God, I, lo I love you too. Like I say it as if I'm dating him. I love you too. Like, I love you too. I love you. I love you. I'm in love with you. I'm going deeper. I'm in love with you. So, guys, try it. It's a good therapy. Like I told you, give three months. Give your give God three months of your life. Check it. All the years of your life for the past 20 something years, 30 something years, 40 something years of your life, or how old you are. You have been doing trying and error. You do this, you for frustration, this, that, and that and that. And I'm just telling you, just three months, this September, from now to December, just give God dedicatedly every single day. Then let's see the difference. If not for anything, the kind of peace you will experience, the kind of peace you will experience, you will be like, I, I, are, you, are, you, are you serious? Like, I, can't, I could actually feel this way. I could actually be happy for no reason. This video is long already, like, I don't like making long videos again. 
but i just know that i've passed my information to you guys so as you do that if you're not a christian or if you're not saved yet i want you to just wherever you are just tell god i give you my life i give you myself i give you everything about me like leave all the things is a work in progress it's something that you cannot do in a day he works on us every day every day every day they are new new things every day in, in him like you can't even exhaust the whole thing so if you're not saved you can just say a short prayer wherever you are and tell god forgive me my sins i accept you as my lord and personal savior i want you to come into my heart holy spirit and dwell and tabernacle let that spirit that raised jesus from there dwell in you and let it quicken your mortal body so that whenever you come into his presence he will also be present with you you're not just blabbing for nothing i hope this motivates someone please frustration is not the key suicide is not the key what is it called depression hey god it's not the key please you could be better you can you can you can be happy without that thing you're looking for you can have peace without that thing you're looking for and God can make it come to pass. And when you when you start the work in you, you see yourself glowing for no reason, without stress. Because of what his oil has dropped on your head. <laughs> I hope that this motivates one person, even if it's just one person that will say, Okay, I will do this. I am fine. I am fine with it. I hope this motivates you guys. You can imagine I'm standing up making this video because I want to quickly do it and rush out. So God will help you. God will heal you. God will answer your prayers. God knows your heart desires and he will meet them in Jesus' name. Thank you guys for watching and see you on my next video. Bye-bye.